stupid son of a bitch! Do, 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 do. It's time for another terrible Toonie uh, Tuesday. Uh, what's going on? I'm a cartoon. Oh, I've turned animated in parts. I guess that must mean this is the first animated review. Oh, it's going to be something bad, isn't it? No way. This is Heavy Metal 2000. Yep, I was right. Oh, the first Heavy Metal movie was so good. Then many years later, they made this. Oh, this hurts to make my face stay this way. There's a new warrior in the galaxy. Don't talk, don't touch, don't even breathe. She's armed to the teeth. So let me just start by saying I absolutely love the original one. I love that era of 70s sci-fi pulp kind of sleaze. But by the year 2000, when the sequel was being made, it had been done. That generation had been raised on some crazy anime. And that didn't mean much to them. And she'll take you down big time. You shouldn't have done that. It's not for the timid. It's not for the meek. And it's definitely not for your parents. Over 200 dirty words. You're not from our world. So you needed to up the ante. You needed to be extremely slick, artistic, deep storyline, epic in every way. Which this didn't really do that. Probably from budget restraints. The original had a really low budget to begin with. But it was all the pulp element and it really fit the time. 2000, not so much. It's not as terrible as we remember it to be because we were just disappointed on the feelings we had if we really loved the first one. But there are some legit real problems. Why didn't you tell me that before? One of the killers of quality on this is the animation. Sometimes the animation is really good and looks really cool, but other times it really doesn't. In the original film, it was an anthology, so different artists took different scenes and took different interpretations. Here we have millions of different artists, but that's just because they couldn't afford to get it all done themselves. So it jumps back and forth to whoever was filling in on what scene, which really makes the quality jump up and down. It makes you stop giving a damn. Also, the sound mix isn't so great either because of that style of bass-ridden music that they wanted to use. It overamped inside the sound so if people were talking in the scene you weren't paying attention because you were hearing through the screaming lyrics of the songs that they were playing also the worst the 90s cgi that time when it was you were too lazy to do 3d stuff so you used the new accessible 3d cgi which looked awful Ew. there's a lot of cheesy elements of bad animation and you know Ralph Vasky's style of photos on animation which shows the time that it was from in the 70s but it's a kitsch and we accept it nobody accepted that X-Men 1993 ending credits CGI stuff it just didn't work and it really takes you out of this film when it happens it kicks ass yeah man check out the soundtrack Actually, the best part about this whole goddamn movie was the double CD release of the soundtrack. There's some great stuff on there. Hey, Monster Magnet, Pantera, Department 26, who the f Sinistar, fuck. Oh my god, the Insane Clown Posse. What the fuck? Actually, no, I'm still sticking with it. The soundtrack's pretty fucking amazing. But maybe if you're not from my generation and not exactly pinpointing exactly my age, this soundtrack might not be so great for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, it's pretty cool that Billy Idol actually did a voice in this, too. Michael Ironside, great voice in this, too. Yeah, that really fits. Brings that Total Recall feel. Again, if you weren't a fan of sci-fis in 1986, 
you don't get the reference. The original movie stole the world's heart with its soundtrack that was exactly right for its time period. The album was great. Just like this one in 2000. Ugh, man, almost all these bands are dated by the time they came out. Metal 2000 rocks on video and DVD. Always been a big fan of heavy metal in every possible way. Julie Strain, also a fan of. I love those terrible Andy Sedaris action movies. However, she's more so an object than she is an actress. Not to objectify her, but that's been what is her selling point. So voice acting, not her strongest point. Really, it's about Kevin Eastman, her husband at that time, who was the main publisher and CEO of Heavy Metal Magazine that time. Kevin Eastman, famous for making the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Peter Laird. So they were putting her in there. They made this character fact based off her. Uh, a couple of her other movies that she released, just general hilarious boob joke action movies, uh, drew the cover, usually had either Kevin Eastman or the Mr. Metal himself, Simon Bisley, big fan, uh, doing the covers. So, they decided, why not, after all these years, make a sequel to the amazingly animated anthology film, Heavy Metal. It's Heavy Metal 2000, but man, does it still feel like the 90s. Fact 2, the character comes from a story in Heavy Metal magazine throughout that time, and but the rest of it's all based on Kevin Eastman's other comic book series, Melting Pot, that him and Bisley worked on separately, as well as during Heavy Metal. But not enough of it. Heavy Metal is a great magazine. Melting Pot, a great comic book. The soundtrack for this, incredible. I like Julie Strain's other films. She's a lot of fun. <sighs> the Heavy Metal, the original one, great. But together, oh, a disappointment. A crazy romp into the idea of what being a cyber goth in the 90s was supposed to be but not actually what it was. Heavy Metal 2000. Suck your mind dry. You fools! So we'll see you next week for another terrible Toony Tuesday. And remember, April 10th, that Tuesday, is a live interactive screening party at Isor Cinema in Toronto. Our monster movie parties keep on going. Get at me. We'll see you soon.